Good evening, Yonkers. Most of you will probably watch this tomorrow. But um, for those of you who do tune in at some point in the next 10 minutes, because I'm not going to be on that long. Thanks for joining me. Um, yeah, I was at the Columbus Day parade slash festival up on Midland Avenue the other day. And uh, I was talking to somebody about a situation involving a friend of mine who works for DPW, uh, who knows just about everybody in the city of Yonkers, just, just about everybody who works for the city of Yonkers, fire department, police department, DPW guy. And uh, so few people are aware of his situation with the city of Yonkers. Specifically, this administration is putting him through. And uh, when I had an opportunity to speak to another friend of mine on Midland Avenue the other day, I asked him if he knew what was going on with Paulie. And uh, he said, no, I didn't know anything was going on with Paulie. Tell me about it. So I did. So, you know, it's not all that dissimilar from my situation. When I say Paulie, of course, I mean Paul Agostino. That works for DPW for, I think, over 20 years. Um. So what are they doing to Paulie? Well, basically they're doing to him what they did to me. And as I've been keeping track of the situation, I've noticed as it's gone on that it's playing out exactly the same way my situation played out. What they're effectively doing is they're using this IMA clinic, this city contracted clinic of underperforming quacks who take orders from City Hall on what to write about city employees. Now, before we get to that, and I don't even know if I'll get that far tonight because I just want to give an introduction to the situation. But so it's a little over a year ago now that I started with Freddie Vasquez. Uh, I went on Freddie for the first time, I think it was September 26th of 2022. And, um, it wasn't long before people all over the city of Yonkers started reaching out to me with stories of their own, comments about my situation. And um, this fellow Paul Agostino, <coughs> who it turns out, I know some people in his family, and we certainly have a lot of the same friends from around the city. Paul reaches out to me. He gets in touch with somebody that we both know. And... Uh, he has somebody reach out to me and say, listen, tell this guy, Anthony, I want to talk to him. They're doing the same thing to me. So I said, all right. And I get in touch with Paulie and we start talking. And, um, you know, the way it developed with me once I pissed off a couple of the wrong people uh, in the police department, all kind of developed very rapidly. Right. It was a series of very, very quick escalations that started out with nothing more than a dispute at a crime scene. Okay. And uh, within a number of weeks, I was up at this quackery clinic and around to losing my job. Now, with Paulie, it's a little bit different. Paulie has been having issues in the workplace for, I can only say the way he describes the story to me, the better part of two decades. Paulie's a lot like me, not an ass kisser. Uh, doesn't like to play stupid games with people. Just likes to show up to work, do a good job, and go home. That's tough to do in Spano land. Because you have to, you're required to kiss a certain amount of ass if you don't want to be messed with. And, um, you know, over the years he's had his little workplace beefs about unequal treatment. Um, disputes with certain individuals. There were times where he complained about nepotism, which is a big no-no in Spanel. And anybody who works for the city of Yonkers knows that that's something you don't complain about right? unless you really want to be messed with. Uh, he complained about supervisors that he knew used drugs. That's another big no-no. I mean, there were a lot of steamed up people who work for all different departments within the city of Yonkers who use drugs habitually and get away with it. And everybody knows about it. And, uh, you know, that's just something that's not likely to change anytime soon. But Paulie would complain about it from time to time, especially since they were the people basically harassing him. 
Um, I've decided that just, you know, for tonight, I'm not going to say any names. Maybe I'll get into some of the names that he was having issues with as I continue to talk about the story with Paulie more and more as I go on with these podcasts, because now that I'm opening the can, uh, you know, I'll <clears throat> provide extra details from time to time. Uh, but it was it's about time that this story got out because it's happening in exactly the same way that it happened with me. And one of the other details that I'll get into at some point, not tonight, is uh, Paulie and I had occasion to speak to other people that the city was doing this same trick with. Purging the city ranks of people who are willing to butt heads with Spanos. Um, you know, Paulie being DPW is a four, five, six guy. He's a teamster. They have different sick leave than I had in the police department. You know, they have something called FMLA. It's a, it's a whole system of sick leave and doctors networks and things like that. That's regulated by apparently the federal government. I'm not all that familiar with it, but Paulie explained to me a little bit about how it works. You know, when he started making complaints with human resources through a woman named Tracy, who apparently works under Carlos Moran, I don't know her. I never dealt with her. Um, it was the same thing that happened with me when I made a complaint about Louis Venturino's voicemail. The city ignores the complaint that you made. And they start piling up complaints against you in an orchestrated manner as retaliation for you making initial complaints about other people. And this went on for years with Paulie, apparently. Got to the point where as retaliation, and again, I'll get to the names that were involved in this at a later date, but as retaliation, they even took it so far as to spread a really nasty rumor about him. One that I'm not gonna repeat on this podcast, not tonight and probably not in the future either. Let's just say it's, you know, it's of a nasty enough nature where if it had gotten back to his family, it probably would have hurt. It would have hurt them, and it might have even caused them some serious problems. You know, I don't know if that happened. I didn't really ask him for those details. That's none of my business, and it doesn't matter for what we're talking about with this clinic. But um, the details are many. You know, I talked to Paul about the situation. He gets very passionate about it, like I get when I talk about my situation. And um, the details are many. Um, I'm a little too tired to start getting into them in, in great depth tonight, but I want to put everybody on notice this, this trick that they play with the clinic to get rid of people that they don't like to take people's jobs and destroy people's lives, destroy people's families, destroy people's reputations. When I say they, I'm talking about the Spanos, obviously this game that they play is not just one that they played with me. They played it with this guy, Paulie. They played it with another fellow by the name of Artie Johnson, who they've now gotten back to work. Basically, as soon as they found out that he was talking to Paulie and I, they sent him back up to the IMA clinic to get cleared in a day like this. And he was back at work. I'll get into that in more detail in the future. But, uh, you know, I know that a lot of the people who watch my podcast with Freddie and a lot of the people who watch the solo podcast that I've been doing are cops and uh city hall people and i know some firefighters as well but i think it's about time that the dpw guys started watching too because they can play this trick with any of you at any minute the parks department all you guys all right so i just want to come on tonight real quick to open up the can with the paulie agostino situation it's a green light it's a go i'm going to be talking about him in connection with my own termination story You'll see the parallels. I'm not. I want to. I want to hold off on the stuff that happened when he went to the IMA clinic because that's very, very juicy. And I'm going to do a podcast just about that, just about Paulie's experience up at the IMA clinic and at the hearing that followed. Um, very jaw dropping stuff. Uh, so for night. So for tonight, I'm going to. I'm going to leave off because I got to go to sleep. I got work tomorrow. I'm going to leave off. I'm just going to say. As Paulie and I were talking, I told him what was coming. I said, they're going to send you off to this quackery clinic. He said, why are they going to do that? 
and I explained to him how the scam works. Now, he, just like any other rational person, was in awe of what I was telling him. He just didn't believe it. Okay? I'm telling you, brother, this is what's going to happen. This is what they do. Okay. We'll see what happens. So Paulie and I stayed in contact, shared notes, had conversations. One day I'm at work at my new job. My phone rings. It's Paulie. I answer. They're sending me. They're sending me to the IMA clinic. I said, I know. That's what I'm going to leave it for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Tune in with me going forward. We're going to talk about Paulie. We're going to talk about Robert Ponzini coming up in a couple of weeks. The hearing officers. Uh, you know, I, I posted about, I posted an announcement saying that I was going to talk about Robert Ponzini, who's a hearing officer that he's an attorney. He's a local attorney. He was once a town judge in Mount Pleasant. Got a whole bunch of dirt under his fingernails. And once I announced that I was going to do that podcast, I was going to do it this just a couple of nights ago, Sunday night after the Columbus Day Parade. But I think I announced it last Thursday. And as soon as I did, forget about it. The dirt about the guy just started pouring in. So he's going under the bus hard in about a week and a half. October 15th is the date that I set. And I'm working on confirming a few things that I've been told about him. But um, make, you know, make no mistake, he's a fraud. He's a hack. He's in the city's pocket. And he's firing people left and right, not only for this city, this rotten city, but for other cities, other municipalities within the county as well. So, uh, <clears throat> Ponzini, if you're out there and you get wind of this, please tune in to watch yourself go under the bus on October 15th. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see everybody soon.